Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Bit of a change of scenery right now, I know. Anyways, I know how late I am with that best films of 2022 list, but believe me, it is coming. Like a lot of things have been going on and I really also did want to take my sweet ass time to just come up with the perfect list, at least what I think is the perfect list to me. But before we talk about the best films of last year, 2022, we're already well into the year of 2023 and there are quite a few incredible films I'm really looking forward to already on the horizon. And there are a bunch that are probably hidden under the radar and that will undoubtedly surprise us. But I do have a list of 15 films that I'm highly anticipating. Number one on the radar and that's coming up like roughly a month away from now will be John Wick Chapter 4. Honestly, the John Wick trilogy has been one of the most exhilarating action films of the last decade. Gorgeous in cinematography, there's a decent story even, it's totally crazy and unbelievable, but the real star of the show is Keanu Reeves himself, who even with something like Matrix, I feel like this is the role of a lifetime for him. He's really giving everything about himself to perform in this film and to really master the stunts. And apparently he's been training for three months just to do the stunts of this film. So already that makes it exciting enough, but to learn that it's nearly three hours in length, God damn, I can't wait. Next up in early April, we have a film called Air, a biopic written and directed by Ben Affleck. Honestly, like not that I think Ben Affleck is a bad actor, but without question, I think he's way better behind the camera as a writer and director. I mean, he did win an Oscar with Matt Damon, who happens to be starring in this film as well, for writing the screenplay for Good Will Hunting. And excellent film. And they also together wrote the screenplay for The Last Duel, an excellent film from 2021 that is sorely underrated. So I'm simply curious to see what he comes up with next. And by default, I'm already a sucker for biopic dramas, and to boot, the film has an all-star cast. We got Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Viola Davis, Chris Tucker, Jason Bateman that come off the top of my head. Next up at number three, also a film that releases early in April, will be the Super Mario Bros. films. Initially, my interest was rather lukewarm to it because, of course, film adaptations from video game source material have been pretty hit or miss, though it has gotten better in recent years, especially with some excellent TV shows. Look no further than Last of Us is playing right now. Anyway, the initial trailer that came out honestly had me kind of excited because it seems like it's beautifully made, like there's a lot of passion put into it, even if I do feel that Chris Pratt no disrespect to him, doesn't make a great Mario. At the very least, I'm curious as a game developer and as a fan to see how this legendary franchise gets translated into film. Next up at number four is probably my most anticipated film of the year. That would be Bo is Afraid, which is coming out late April, and it's a film written and directed by none other than Ari Oster. Honestly, since like the mid to late 2010s, there's been this like renaissance of excellent horror films. This was led by filmmakers like Robert Eggers with The Witch and then The Lighthouse, and of course Jordan Peele with films like Get Out, Us, and most recently Nope. But this third director of this renaissance horror trilogy has to be Ari Aster. He did an incredible job with Hereditary and Midsommar. I am still reeling backwards from watching those films. Such unique take on cinema and one of those breathtaking and creative voices in horror today. I cannot wait to see what he brings to the table, especially with a master actor like Joaquin Phoenix in a three hour runtime film. Next up at number five, I did say that Bo is Afraid is my most anticipated film of the year and it probably still holds true, but it's hard to place it, especially when you have a filmmaker like Martin Scorsese coming out with yet another film. This would be The Killers of the Flower Moon. Supposedly, it may be coming out in May. The release date isn't quite clear. All I know is that this is a legendary filmmaker that is just on this golden winning streak one after another. Honestly, I think he's one of the most prolific filmmakers of all time, really, but especially of the last decade. So whenever Mars Scorsese is working on a new picture, it is something that we all have to see. Next up at number six, some summertime vibes. And which better film to start with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? Now I'm not sure that I needed a sequel because the previous film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was just sensational. Even, even non-Marvel fans will watch this film and just be absolutely floored by the artistry, the creativity, the, the just complete joy and euphoria of watching this film. So I am slightly wary of the sequel, but regardless, it's impossible not to be excited to see, or at the very least, the incredible art style put to use in new creative ways. At number seven, number eight, we have two films from Wes Anderson this year. First off is Asteroid City, which supposedly should be launching June 23rd. 
I know very little about it other than the fact that it is a Wes Anderson film, which is more than enough for me. But the second film that he has slated for 2023 would be The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. Now for this film, there's very little I know about it apart from the fact that it's an adaptation of a Roald Dahl story, that it's going to be a Netflix release, and that there's an all-star cast such as Benedict Cumberbatch, Dev Patel, Ben Kingsley, and Ray Fiennes. So definitely two films worth looking into because Wes Anderson is yet another one of those filmmakers that are just so uniquely their own. You'll see a frame of their film and without any context you know that oh that is a Wes Anderson film. I am very curious to see what he brings next. Next at number nine, easy what could be the summer blockbuster film of the year would be Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Now I'm not the biggest Mission Impossible fan like I'm not saying they're bad movies but just I've never been super engaged with them. Though I will admit that the quality has been super consistent and I must say especially with last year's Top Gun Maverick I am really impressed with Tom Cruise's dedication to perform the stunts himself such as flying the jet planes himself in Top Gun and even in this one we see teasers of him performing stunts such as riding a motorbike off a fucking cliff. It sounds super exciting so I'm really looking forward to that. Now more July releases. So Mission Impossible is coming out July 14 but a week later we have two of the most interesting films coming out this year. The first I'm gonna start off with Oppenheimer written and directed by Christopher Nolan. I mean let's face it Christopher Nolan is one of the defining filmmakers of our generation and Oppenheimer my god what a powerful topic for a film and also to have Killian Murphy feature in his film as a leading role especially after his incredible work that he's done in Peaky Blinders I'm really excited to see the kind of horror and filmmaking magic they will bring to the screen. And what a timely piece as well in an era where we've never been closer to nuclear annihilation than ever before. Scary stuff but it's gonna be interesting to see what an artist like Christopher Nolan is capable to bring to the table in this climate. So like I said there is a second film coming out that same day granted that there aren't any pushbacks of course. And this film I I honestly don't know if it's going to be good or just fucking terrible but I am intrigued. This will be the new Barbie film and before you frown at me you should really look into who's writing and directing this film. That would be Greta Gerwig. Honestly since she, she took a role behind the camera as a writer and director with films like Lady Bird and Little Women she's been doing excellent work. What an incredible start to her career and for her to choose this as her next film and to have Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling in it and then to in the trailer use 2001 Space Odyssey's obelisk as an homage for this giant Barbie thing. What is going on? Like honestly I can't make heads or toes of it. It could be the best film of the year or one of the defining films of the year or just something so fucking weird and gonzo that yeah I really don't know what to make of it but I'm gonna go see it day one for sure. Now moving on to November we have a highly anticipated film. That will be none other than Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2. The first film was just such a miracle. The books themselves are just some of the most important piece of literature I have ever read and one of the defining sci-fi philosophical spiritual experiences of my life. And to see just the incredible nuance and power that Denis Villeneuve brought in the first film I mean I can't wait to see what he brings to the table with this. This film is absolutely unmissable and kind of like Martin Scorsese that I mentioned earlier who's had an incredible winning streak last, last decade, Denis Villeneuve is very much in that same boat and if anything I would put him at the top of that food chain. I mean in the 2010s he did Ace on Z, Prisoners, Enemies, Sicario, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049, holy shit and then to kick off the decade with a film like Dune, an impossible film to adapt and to do it with such incredible success. Once again it is simply unmissable. Next at number 13, supposedly this film is coming out November 10, this will be David Fincher's next film The Killer. So there's very little I know about this film and I'm just going in with as much of a blank slate as possible because this is a filmmaker that has been incredibly consistent throughout his entire career except for his directorial debut Alien 3 which honestly he disowns himself but there's no denying that he has one of the most celebrated filmographies of all time. He really is one of the greatest modern filmmakers living today and it's always exciting to see him come up with a new project. To finish off the list there are two films that I'm very curious about but that have no specific release dates so I'm gonna mention them nonetheless. The first be Maestro. 
written and directed by Bradley Cooper. I really like what Bradley Cooper has been doing as an actor from the last 10 years. And though I've yet to see A Star Is Born, his directorial debut, I've heard nothing but glowing reviews from it. So it's super exciting to see what he's going to do next as a director. There's little that I know about this film other than that, and that's perfectly fine with me. Sometimes I like going with a blank slate. All I know and I need to know at this point is that this is a filmmaker that shows a lot of promise and I'm very curious to see how that talent comes to fruition. And now last, but certainly not least, at number 15 I'm placing Poor Things. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's fine. I think this is pretty much under the radar for now. But this is the new film from Yorgos Lantimos, an incredible Greek filmmaker who is responsible for decade-defining films such as The Lobster, The Killing of the Sacred Deer, and The Favorite. Wild, creative, and absolutely crazy films, but incredible artistic achievements. To see that he's potentially releasing a new film sometime this year, I'm all for it. I don't even want to know what the film's going to be about. I just know that this filmmaker I trust and I want to see what he comes up with next. So yeah, an exciting time for the cinemas. Of course, there are some that I probably forgot to mention or some that I don't even know are coming out. And you know what? I'm more than happy to be surprised with what's coming this year. I'm going to be keeping busy and fear not, I have not forgotten to work on that best films of 2022 list. It is coming however late it may be at this point you know everyone did their list so who cares how late i am all that's really important for me right now is that i take care of my health and that i don't burn myself out like i said this youtube thing as much as i love it is not my full-time job but fear not on top of the year list, i got other videos that are coming down the pipeline very soon so as always wishing you and your loved ones nothing but the best take care and talk to you soon